watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. Man, do we have something super exciting for you today. And of course, we love to minister to you about the specific needs in your life. So if you have a prayer request, we'd like for you to call right now or get on the website. It's a real pleasure and an honor for us to get to pray for you. And you know, today what we're doing is we're going through a teaching that we've we've done over the course of many years on the tabernacle. And I just want to encourage each of you watching that you'd grab this as a tremendous resource for you. It's called the Tabernacle Syllabus. You say, well, what's the tabernacle? And mom, when I think about the tabernacle, I was a friend of mine asked me, what's the tabernacle? It sounds kind of weird. And I said, in some respects, if we think about it in a modern way, the tabernacle, it was kind of the predecessor to the modern church. Right. And, and really when you look at it, it's, it, it, it it even preceded the temple. So when you had Solomon set up and build the temple mm -hmm. and all of that, well, back up the train before that came the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was um, a mobile, mobile temple, really, mm -hmm. mobile church. And so the way we have the tabernacle, we read about uh, how uh, Moses received it in the book of Exodus. Moses went up on Mount Sinai, was up there 40 days and 40 nights, and God gave him the layout and all of the pieces of the furniture for the tabernacle. But the purpose of the tabernacle was to create a place for God's presence to be in the middle of the Israelites right. as they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And it was a defining, I would say even a defining characteristic that made the Israelites distinct from everybody around them because the presence of God came with them. And the tabernacle had many pieces of furniture in it that had an altar for sacrificing. It had a, a laver for washing and stuff. It had an altar of incense. It had a, a golden lampstand for light, it had a table of showbread, and it had specific courts and it was organized in a very, very particular and meticulous way. Um, but, and of course, all of that's talked about in here. We want you to get this in our tabernacle syllabus. But mom, when we come into what would be the most intimate place for God's presence in all of the tabernacle, it would be called the Holy of Holies. Right. And in the Holy of Holies, which is in, in essence where we're standing, representing right now, there were two pieces of furniture. The first piece of furniture was the bottom part here called the Ark of the Covenant. Right. And then the second piece of furniture was the mercy seat. And this is kind of a really, really kind of the culmination really for God's presence. And so mom, walk us through a little bit because if somebody's looking at this, they may say, you know, it's kind of golden and shiny, but what, what is all that stuff up there? Well, this is very important. These are cherubims and many people say this is mercy and truth. You know, uh, God is merciful, but he's also truthful. And so that his presence was above here and he would speak to them from the mercy seat. And that's really interesting to me because Jesus, when he died, took his blood up and put it on the mercy seat in heaven because all of these are fashioned after the pattern in heaven. So he put his blood on the mercy seat. So what did that say? That when we come to God and we want him to talk to us, he talked to, to, talks to us from the mercy seat. And so they would talk about the overspreading of wings. You know, I love what Boaz said to Ruth. He said, you have come to put your faith under the overspreading wings of the Almighty God. Now remember, Ruth is a Gentile. She's a Moabite. She used to worship idols, but she put her faith in mercy and truth. And so overspreading wings always had to do with protection and that's interesting to me in the New Testament when Jesus said, you know, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks. What is he? He is the, our mercy seat and he wants to cover us with his wings. And so he's not going to say, okay, any old thing you do is fine because this is truth. And he's not gonna say, because you did it, I'm gonna kill you. He's going to have mercy. Why? Because your faith is in his blood that he sprinkled here on the mercy seat. So that's very key for us to know that when we come to him and he talks to us from the place of mercy and truth. And I like the fact that uh, Moses, you know, he would talk to Moses from the mercy seat. And the priest, you know, 
uh, the high priest would go in once a year only to the Holy of Holies. Now we have total access. The curtain is ripped open. But he would go in once a year and he would go in with trembling. And so he would sprinkle blood seven times on the mercy seat. Seven is the number of completion. And they would listen for him because nobody could go in. He went in with the blood because if they didn't hear him, he could have been killed. But we don't go to the mercy seat of Jesus and think that we're going to be killed. We believe he wants truth and mercy to work together. And that Jesus calls to us, and like he said to Jerusalem, oh, that you would have come under my overspreading wings because he is the mercy seat. And, you know, he wouldn't let anybody touch him till he got his blood up there on the mercy seat. That's really good, Mom. And, and I love that when we come to God, it's not in condemnation, it's not in judgment, it's not in harshness, and it's not in exclusivity, and, and you can't come and untouchable and all that, but God reaches out to us. And I like that God is always very gracious and kind and long-suffering and faithful and gentle and embracing and inclusive. And the mercy seat, it was a real, it was a place um, where the Israelites would receive uh, the forgiveness of sins, um, propitiation for sins. And the priest coming in once a year and, and sprinkling the blood on the mercy seat, I mean, that was a really, really big deal. And it wasn't just kind of, oh, well, you know, kind of go through the motions and, you know, human tradition, check the box and move on to the next thing. It was a very significant, weighty, and, and very gra full of gravity what he did at that time. And, and I like the foreshadowing what it looks like for us with Jesus, right. that Jesus forgives right. our sins, that we don't come to Jesus and he's saying, shame on you, you blew it. Jesus doesn't dredge up, well, you know, you did this wrong and you, oh, and I remember when you were thinking about, blue. he doesn't do any of that stuff. He comes to us and we come to him and he embraces us and welcomes us with mercy and not judgment. Yeah, he helps us and says, look, there's more truth in here, but he helps us to walk out in truth and mercy. Now, Sarah, there's something very important in here about the mercy seat. And I don't have time to teach all these things, but I think it's very important that everyone gets the study guide because you know, we're just touching on the edge of it. And I really believe when you get the study guide, God will give you fresh things and you may be writing things, you know, in the margin. And one time I went to God, I was real upset with this woman. And I said, God, she is just using me. You know, I'm at the mercy seat. And God said, did you ever use anyone? Oh, we're not talking about me. I'm talking about her because what is in the mercy seat? is truth and mercy. And so I like that about the Lord, that he's going to give you the truth <laughs> and he's going to show you mercy in it. And it's kind of a sweet feeling to feel you are overshadowed, you know, by his wings. I mean, that's real intimacy with the Lord, that I'm overshadowed by him. One time I remember I awakened in the night and I felt such a presence of God. And the Lord said to me, I just danced over you. Oh, oh my goodness. You know, do we expect him to say good things to us? I mean, this is the most important piece of furniture of all. It's the heaviest, it's the most valuable. It has a crown around it to keep it safe when they traveled. I mean, it was very important. And the glory of God came over this place. And the Bible tells us as we behold him, we are changed into his image and we go from glory to glory. Now, when we behold him, yes, there's truth involved. He's going to tell you the truth, but he's going to tell it to you in a merciful way that he wants you to come through and not, you know, let something undermine you here. But he is there with the glory cloud over, over the mercy seat because he wants to take you from glory to glory. And this is really, really important for you. So when I go into the Holy of Holies and I'm gonna talk to Jesus, you know, I don't feel like he's trying to slap me because so many times he calls me his beloved. 
Oh, and he even tells us to call people his beloved. I mean, Peter calls Paul beloved. Peter calls Mark, John Mark, beloved. And all these times, so when I get up in the morning, I say this first thing and I make coffee. I say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your beloved Marilyn. You say, well, how can you say that? Well, how can I not say it? It's what it says about you. Why? Because he took the curse. He took the condemnation. And yes, he will deal in truth with us, but he deals truth with mercy. So You've got good. to get this. And the prayer pattern's in here too. Don't put it off. Call in. And don't get one. Come on. Don't you want to share the word with other people? Of course you do. So pass it on. And you know, Mom, in a couple minutes or just briefly here, we're going to come back. We'll talk a little bit about the cherubim. Because the cherubim, you know, that's kind of a, a strange concept for us. Right. It's not very modern and we're not really aware of it. And so when you see these golden cherubim on the top of this thing, we're going to discuss a little bit about what that is. And of course, we'd invite our viewers as well. If they have a need in their life, prayer, anything like that, hop on the phone, get on the website. Really powerful, powerful way for us to minister to the needs in your life. And when you're on the phone, of course, grab your tabernacle syllabus, grab a couple of them because it's going to be a really great resource for you. One of the things I love about this is on page 127, there's a whole little path in here about how to pray and how to pray using the tabernacle furniture as a pattern in your prayer life. And so if you've ever struggled with a prayer life and, and having a good, robust, consistent, uh, deep and vibrant, intimate prayer life, then obviously you need to grab this. It'll be a tremendous resource and benefit in your life. The tabernacle was more than an earthly dwelling for God. Every minute detail, from the color choice, the placement of each piece, and even the way the camp was set up, foretold the coming Messiah and His work of atonement. For your gift of $29 or more, we want to send you the Tabernacle Syllabus. Take a new, in-depth look at Jesus through this revolutionary resource and study of the Tabernacle. We will also send you the Tabernacle Prayer Plan, this updated four DVD set from Marilyn and Sarah has nine total teachings. You will learn biblical keys to prayer and how the Tabernacle Prayer Plan is relevant today. You will also learn about each individual piece of furniture in the Tabernacle and how scripture unfolded Christ to us and revealed our approach to the Father. The study of the Tabernacle can give us hope because it illustrates God's plan of salvation and how it was put into motion before the creation of the world. Call or click to get yours today. seat and the mercy seat that was the lid on top of the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant, which was in the Holy of Holies. But this mercy seat was kind of the culminating piece of furniture for the entire tabernacle. And you'll see on the top here, I talked about this a few minutes earlier about these cherubim. And these represent angels basically that are up in heaven at God's throne. And I love, man, I love this in Isaiah chapter six, when Isaiah mm -hmm. talks about, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And there's a sense of who can I send? And he said, Lord, send me. And he's unclean. 
and the cherubim comes and takes a coal from the altar and touches his lips and makes him clean. And I love that the cherubim, and then I love that wheel within a wheel. Remember, is it Ezekiel that of talked course, about of that? Course. And then, you know, how they're covered with their wings, right. four sets of wings, six sets of wings and eyes and all that. And really this is a representation of the highest rank of angels that minister at the throne of God. And they always say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Oh my goodness. They are filled Whoa. with worship. But you know, you have seraphim, that's another rank of angels. And then you have archangels. Uh, you have Michael and Gabriel. And it appears that Gabriel brings messages of pregnancy, you know. And they, they say these are special angels appointed to the children of Israel. So I think seeing the angels is very, very important and that seraphim are the highest ranks because they protected, they were for protection. Now I believe Sarah, when they were driven out of the Garden of Eden, that there were cherubim pointed there to keep people, Adam and Eve, right. from coming back in because they are under the curse. But now <laughs> the curse is broken and we come to the mercy seat because you know, in Old Testament, they had to take a lamb and something and, you know, just think forgiveness would only last for a year. <laughs> then you had to do it next year. Then you had to sprinkle blood here every year, every year, every year. We don't have to because perfect blood has been sprinkled in heaven for us. And we can come to that mercy seat. And, you know, there he will speak to us if we can always remember he speaks from the mercy seat. And Sarah, you talked about glory. This is where the glory came. So he talks to us. We want him to talk to him. I want him to talk to me and tell me things. You know, the other day I was walking, trying to get my exercise done. And I said, Lord, you know, I'm just walking. I'd like for you to talk to me. But since you're not talking right now, I'll talk to you. And I said, uh, this I want to do this year and this I want to do this year and I want to go there this year and I'm all and I need to know how to plan and he just spoke so sweetly he said let me in other words settle down because after Jesus did this he sat down at the right hand why because it's finished it's finished and I want to say this to you today we are seated in Christ in heavenly places. Do we sit in a rest in Him? Or are we always trying to work? I think sometimes He says, you want to work? Then you do it, I'll rest. But if you want to sit down and rest, then I can do it. And so this is an important thing for us that we're seated in heavenly places in Him. We're not running up there and trying to help Him, you know. Adam and Eve were not made until the sixth day. Now we would have said, make us first, we'll help you make everything. Their first full day on the earth was a day of rest. Have we learned how to come to the mercy seat and rest in Him instead of wrestle with Him? Have we learned that? That's very key for us. And I looked at Solomon and when God spoke to him, He always spoke to him when he was sleeping. He was resting. And I wonder sometimes if God gives us spiritual dreams because we don't listen in the daytime, but to be seated with Him and listen to Him. It comes out of knowing that you're under the shadow of His wings and He's called you to that place and He's prepared everything. He's bought it all with His blood. Amen. Mom, I just love that. And you know, one of the things too that's so powerful about the, this mercy seat is it's also the glory of the Lord and the cloud rested yes. on the mercy seat. Oh, and that's yes. really significant because that was a key way that the Israelites followed God is by following that cloud. And you also see lots of other demonstrations of the glory of the Lord um, that are throughout and the cloud of God throughout uh, the Israelites' journey in the wilderness. And all of that was talked Page about. Page 115, Exactly, Sarah. exactly. 115. Yep. And a very key thing to remember is that when Balaam was hired to curse the Israelites, he blessed them. 
And if you remember, he went four different directions and he blessed them. And the king, Balak, was so mad at him. I'm not going to pay you anything. And this is what he said. I cannot curse what God has blessed. And he, when he looked down there, there was a tabernacle right in the center. And three tribes north, three tribes south, three tribes east, three tribes west. What's he looking at? The cross. Because the cross took the curse for us and gave us the blessing. And this is why it is so important about our identity in Christ. It is so important. Sarah, this part about the glory cloud is out of this world. I know, Mom, it's probably one of my favorite things. Really? Yeah, and you know, when you think about Moses and Moses when he went up on Mount Sinai and that whole experience of Moses getting the whole tabernacle pattern up there and how that all kind of sorted out because and when that initially started, you know, there's this big trumpet and all the Israelites are scared out of their mind, rightfully so. I mean, it was freaky. And there's this cloud and it says that Moses goes into the cloud. And that's in Exodus 24. And I, that just takes my breath away because I think sometimes God invites us to a deeper walk with God, but it's also a walk of not knowing everything. <laughs> and it's a walk of trust. Right. And sometimes things seem a little murky and unclear. You know, and you're like, oh, I don't quite know how this is going to, I don't know how this is going to come out in the laundry. You know, you have questions because we always want to know the future. We want to know the plan. We want to know all this stuff. And I think sometimes God invites us to stuff that we don't totally know. It's not, it's not familiar. It's not even sometimes even comfortable. It's not according to our senses, right? right. And sometimes the glory of God overwhelms what we understand in our natural mind as well as our sensory uh, existence. And so I think sometimes we need to be careful to trust God and to really say, no matter what I understand, no matter what I feel or what I'm going or through, I make the decision. And sometimes it's a moment by moment decision to trust God. And mom, we have people watching today that need to grow in their trust with God right. that are struggling with that. So I just encourage you, if you're watching today and you're having a difficult time trusting God, why don't you get on the phone or get on our website? We would love to pray for you that you would grow in your trust with God and you would sense God and God's presence. But whether you do or you don't, that you can consistently make the decision to trust God. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you that you would grow in your trust and hearing God and trusting God no matter what. And Ephesians says that the God of glory would grant unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ the eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we might know the hope of his calling and the glory of his inheritance in the saints. When you come to the throne, what is it? <laughs> That's the throne of glory. And he has an inheritance in you that is very important. What is that inheritance? What are the things, you know, watching your children, the things they like to do, the things they excel in, you know, Watch yourself. What are these things you're just so comfortable in and that you see the most success in? That's your inheritance. And so when we come to the mercy seat, I think we get our inheritance revealed to us. The God of glory would grant unto us wisdom and revelation. And I need to know who Jesus is inside me. Not just what he did, but who he is inside me. He's Christ in me, the hope of glory. I can't wait for you to get the tabernacle syllabus. You will just go bananas. Trust me, you will. You know, because for many years I've taught this, read through the Bible every year, and every year I see new things about Jesus. I think, oh, Jesus, you're so good. What more could I learn? There's always more. Be sure you get yours and get another one for a loving friend. That's good. The tabernacle was more than an earthly dwelling for God. Every minute detail, from the color choice, the placement of each piece, and even the way the camp was set up, foretold the coming Messiah and His work of atonement. For your gift of $29 or more, we want to send you the Tabernacle Syllabus. Take a new, in-depth look at Jesus through this revolutionary resource and study of the tabernacle. We will also send you the Tabernacle Prayer Plan, 
This updated four DVD set from Marilyn and Sarah has nine total teachings. You will learn biblical keys to prayer and how the tabernacle prayer plan is relevant today. You will also learn about each individual piece of furniture in the tabernacle and how scripture unfolded Christ to us and revealed our approach to the Father. The study of the tabernacle can give us hope because it illustrates God's plan of salvation and how it was put into motion before the creation of the world. Call or click to get yours today. We are so excited to invite you to come with us on our fall group trip. It is a trip of a lifetime. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss this trip. We get to go to China and Tibet and Singapore. And mom, it's not just that we're going to pop through those places. No, no. It's exciting what we get to do there. Yeah, we will do prayer walking in China. We'll do it in Tibet. Can you imagine? But also we're going to Singapore and I will be ministering in New Creation Church at Joseph Prince's Church. So it will be a glorious opportunity for you. And I wouldn't just think of myself, I would think of how many people I could get to go with me. And why not scholarship some people? When these trips are ministry times, and really it is an opportunity of a lifetime. So don't put it off, pray about it, go with us. God is gonna say yes. Go with Marilyn and Sarah. It's very, very important for you. The tabernacle was more than an earthly dwelling for God. Every minute detail, from the color choice, the placement of each piece, and even the way the camp was set up, foretold the coming Messiah and His work of atonement. For your gift of $29 or more, we want to send you the Tabernacle Syllabus. Take a new, in-depth look at Jesus through this revolutionary resource and study of the tabernacle. We will also send you the Tabernacle Prayer Plan. This updated four DVD set from Marilyn and Sarah has nine total teachings. You will learn biblical keys to prayer and how the Tabernacle Prayer Plan is relevant today. You will also learn about each individual piece of furniture in the tabernacle and how scripture unfolded Christ to us and revealed our approach to the Father. The study of the tabernacle can give us hope because it illustrates God's plan of salvation and how it was put into motion before the creation of the world. Call or click to get yours today.